I ain't that chick. It's about self-empowerment. It's about self-awareness. It's about self-respect. You have a quote and that you said, if the world does not provide what you need, then you change the world. And what do you mean by that? It goes back to, that's a quote in my book, and mm -hmm. I actually said it and thought it. It goes back to the challenges of, challenges of hearing loss. Uh, it's invisible. It impacts everything 24-7, everything, even when you're asleep. And some things you, you needed to have, whether it was an assistive listening device that worked with the hearing aid, or after that, the captioning, and you would look around, Nobody ever asked for these things, and that didn't seem to make any sense. So by the time I wrote what you quoted, if the world doesn't provide you what you need, then you change the world. By the time I wrote that, and it's in my second book, that was the reality that mm -hmm. for 25 and more years, it seemed that I went out, hey, why isn't that conference providing captioning? Hey, why isn't there an assistive listening device in this museum? Every single step of the way, I had a change. That it was your call to advocacy, Absolutely. Much. Nobody else was doing it. And That's the corollary of that is that with hearing loss, if you do speak up, if you ask for what you need, then it's incredibly not easy, but effective, effective, that you will be listened to. And people say, I never thought of that before. Because we don't. And so the lesson is one person can change the world. Mm. Well, when I started losing my hearing, the idea that you could have a device that deaf people could hear, <laughs> pipe dream. It was like absurd, wow. you know. Don't wow. even wish for that. That's wow. that's crazy talk. So let me show you what it looked like. Please. Okay, because people I saw this online. don't know what a uh, cochlear implant looks like. The implant itself is inside. It's just a computer chip under my scalp and there's a magnet under my scalp. Okay. That computer chip has an electrode array that is threaded into the cochlea, has electrodes, okay. This is the outside part. Uh -huh. Looks like a hearing aid, however, uh -huh. it's got more. This is the battery. Uh -huh. This is a dedicated computer. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. and I really just wanna say, you're looking at a miracle. Wow. <laughs> Total miracle, this is a computer. And when we put the battery on, it starts up, you see? Wow. And it says green light, but it says, oh, we're looking for something. It's picking up the sound from the microphone. And there are several microphones in this, okay. depending on uh, my needs. Um, just, there are different programs. But my basic one uses this microphone. And this computer's processing it, sending code down here. Now this is looking for the the, the computer Implant. of the uh, chip computer chip. chip under my scalp, and when I put that on, the magnet sticks, and now the signal goes by radio waves through my scalp. Okay, my scalp is closed, and there's no right. holes in there, uh, and the computer chip takes that signal, and that tells the electrodes I have 18 how to fire, and those electrodes are stimulating the auditory nerve, which is uh, at the base of the cochlea, and that sends the signal to my brain, which perceives it as sound. But you know, some people are still hesitant about going from a hearing aid to a cochlear implant. And is it because, you know, maybe I have to really accept that I have a hearing loss? Like, why, why would people be on the fence? Because I would probably rush to do it. Well, the criteria for a, a candidate now has loosened up. In 1997, oh, okay. you had to have no more than 20% hearing oh. in the bad ear. Okay. Okay. And uh, my mind was like, no, no problem oh, okay. qualifying oh. for that. Okay. <laughs> but now, because the results of cochlear implants are so good, 
uh, the criteria has loosened up because the probability of somebody doing better with a cochlear implant than somebody with a hearing aid uh, at, a, at a certain level, they know that you would do better with a cochlear implant. So This month, October, was the big breast cancer awareness walk. And that is so visible and so well known. But why isn't hearing loss just as well known? I mean, have we, have, have we, has the hearing community forgotten the hearing? No, it's, it's, it's an assumption that it's no big deal because it, intellectually it just doesn't seem like any big deal. Hearing loss is not gonna kill you. However, I would say that if you are suffering from hearing loss, um, there are times where you just really don't want to continue. And you know, now you have your aging baby boomers and your teenagers with their iPods. They're on target to lose their hearing a whole lot faster than previous generations. Would you have been an advocate had you just had your hearing not diminished over the years? Well, that's what always the think? question, you know. I and mean, we can get involved with, um, you know, you don't get to choose. And people refer to you as a champion. I mean, you're an advocate, but they also refer to you as a champion. Do you see yourself as a champion? I think I like the word as a verb. I champion people.